So you thinking about quitting C programming in 2021? Well, you reached the right video. Let me explain. This video is brought to you by DigiLink Academy, your number one source to learning programming fast and get to that six figure freelance salary you desire. Our courses include our SQL project course, our freelance Kickstarter, our Python course, and our interview programming course, and much, much more. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click the link below to get to our free seven step freelance guide so that we can help take your career to the next level. I'll see you guys in the course. All right, guys, let's jump right into the problem here. A lot of you guys love C programming and this is what you do. This is what you like, your projects, all this good stuff. But the client is wanting something different. They have other needs and it tends to pull you away from what you actually love to do. Is this a problem? Yes. But as far as just what you can control um, as a freelancer, you got options. But as a W2 nine to five employee, you just got to go with the flow. But at the end of the day, that's why I tell you guys to really um, kind of vet things up front and let you know, is this the right client or the job for you? And we'll go into those details and I'll tell you why I quit C programming and get into that. But before we get started, let's start some dialogue, guys. Comment below your experience with quitting C programming or any programming language. Comment below. Give me some insights on why you quit, um, how long you quit. Do you plan on getting started? And what are you struggling with? Comment below. So guys, if you don't take any thing, if you don't, if you only take one thing away from this video, this is what you take away. Your clients are going to have you focusing on different types of projects, depending on where you work for. Even the software companies, the Facebooks, the Google, you're gonna be working on different portions, different modules of a particular programming language or a particular piece of software. It may not, it may be C, but it may be variables or maybe um, some logic or troubleshooting um, legacy code. There's gonna be times where you don't want to do a specific um, task, but you're gonna be almost forced to do it if you're gonna work for that particular client or that particular employee. This is not a problem, especially short term from project project basis, not a huge deal. But if it just prolonged over years and years and years, maybe this is a good indication for you that this may not be the right client. But at the beginning, as a um, beginner level developer, you shouldn't even be watching this video <laughs> because you need to be putting your head down and focusing on the work as a beginner. And once you get some experience, you get some options on the table, you kind of know what you're doing, you are providing value to the client and the industry, now you got options. Now you can actually really put yourself in a position to win. So let me tell you guys about my experience and why I quit C programming in 2021. All you guys know that I'm working on multiple projects for multiple clients. And at this point, my clients are very mature as far as just their software development stack and what they want to do. You know, as far as just their uh, primary management system, their accounting system, all of their systems, their tech stacks are established. So we're just working specifically on different modules of the two. Me, I don't do a lot of operating system um, management um, coding nowadays, or I don't do any heavy um, primary system coding. All of the systems that I'm working on are secondary. They are outside module type system, which typically are not written in C or C++. And sometimes it, it kind of confuses you because you're like, man, you know, I want to work on this specific program language because this is the man. But every now and then, or a lot of times, the client's just gonna have different stuff. So I'm having to step back from C programming, C++, um, a lot of stuff I learned at the beginning, I don't even use anymore. I'm heavy in the SQL side right now. And um, I don't see that changing anytime soon. Uh, maybe in the future, I'll get more clients that are C based, C++ based, um, or projects that's gonna allow me to deep dive in that. But for right now, I don't see that happening. Is it a good thing? I wouldn't say so. As long as you work, work in a project you like, it's good. Um, but I'm telling you guys, this is this is going to happen to you as well. As you go up that ladder in your career, you're going to have situations to where you're going to be working on similar projects. I, I don't want you to be like, OK, I'm working Python this day, PHP this day. You're just working on every different programming language within a six month time span. I'm not saying that. All I'm saying is your client 
or your employer is going to have a primary programming language and they're going to have a secondary programming language. And sometimes um, their primary programming language is work is their main uh, management system and their secondary is just use stuff like SQL, JavaScript, things like that. And that's what you're going to be your focus for the next, you know, six months, 12 months. It all depends on the client's needs. So don't get discouraged. Don't quit <laughs> like, I, like I did, you know, as far as just I'm, I'm going to I'm going to. My, my mind is I like to focus on specific things. You know, as long as I have that client, that stack, and I go find similar clients with similar stacks, similar programming language, I'm good to go. That way my learning scales, that way I can stay focused to a certain extent. You know, you don't want to be put in a box where you just do one, hey, I only work on variables or I only work on um, certain things. Yeah, you can do that in a larger market, but the tertiary market I'm in, you can't do that. So um, guys, that's all I got to say as, as far as just that. I like to work with my um, students and my clients to make sure I provide them with the best solution. And we always struggle with that. It, we want to quit so bad. And don't get me wrong, I've quit on projects, especially if it's something long term, one off that I know I wasn't going to do again. It's, it's OK to say no, I'm a backup. It's, it's like, hey, this is not working. Let me back up, reassess. And the thing about quitting that makes it bad is you quit and you don't move forward in any direction. You just quit, sit down and go uh, watch TV. That's you don't want to do that here. Yeah, you want to sit back, go watch TV to take your mind off for a couple of hours. But at the end of the day, you want to come back and say, OK, what mistakes I made here? Why is this not good for me? So the next decision, next project is going to be along your skill set, things you want to do. You're going to be more engaged and it's going to increase the probability that you are going to be successful. That's what we want here, guys. And that's why I'm going to get you guys to aim and to make sure we stay on track and we complete projects. And yeah, quitting is part of the game, but quitting is only bad when you don't move forward after your initial quit. Keep that in mind, guys. Like, subscribe to the content. If you have additional questions, comment below. Let's start a conversation in the comment section, guys. I'm going to be bringing you guys some different type of content here. I'm in the process of moving. Bear with me. I'm going to have to move all this stuff <laughs> to my new place. And my new place is not ready. It's under construction. So I'll be moving in a construction zone. But show must go on. We're going to get you guys into the content. Um, bear with me. Definitely going to be doing that. Like, subscribe to the content. Um, also, um, tell me about your situation so that we can have a conversation with Galo. I'll put a set, uh, uh, link to my seven step guide here on the screen. And um, if you already checked out that free seven step guide, go ahead and buy some of the curriculum and courses, guys, and help take your career to the next level. Live the life you want to live and get the salary that you want. And I'll see you guys in the next video.